everybody, Bass Bees. So today, I'm gonna talk to y'all about preparing for winter. And what I do is about this time of year, I know that my hives need to be well nourished. They're, uh, these are the bees that are gonna be raising my winter bees. So I want them well fed and healthy. You should have your varroas mites knocked back by now. So your mite counts are low. And you're either starting your fall flow or maybe you're not getting a fall flow. But the way I determine mine, and it's going to be different for everybody's area. And some of this you're just going to have to learn your season and your local flows. I mean, I can give you a some ideas but I mean some of it you're going to have to learn too but for me here in Missouri how I do it is uh hopefully I got some hives that are strong enough to have a super on for the fall flow so I can get a little fall flow honey which has nothing to do with the winter nest really these girls are in the super, but they haven't started working it yet. So, what I'm looking for is I still want to keep my bees fed. I, I uh, use pollen patties. I want well-nourished bees. Sometimes there's pollen coming in, but pollen isn't created equally. You really need diversity in pollen. Some pollens ain't very good. I mean, some, some they can't really just brood up on one pollen. So we got goldenrod pollen in, coming in. It's orange. It's pretty good pollen. And we got some white chicory pollen. And the way I gauge mine, I know about the middle of September, my queens are going to drop about eight or nine frames of brood. Solid. They do it every year. I check them from time to time, and I'll see it go through the whole yard. They all brood up basically the same time. They drop a tremendous amount of brood. Now, they need the resources to be able to do this. Um, the, the secret, I mean, there's no secret to wintering. The, the key to wintering is healthy bees, prolific queens, low mite counts, plenty of resources, and big clusters. Big clusters is where it's at. So... What I will do is I will check on my hives time to time, make sure they got enough food to drop that eight or nine frames of brood. And if the nurse bees are healthy, that's going to be feeding them eight or nine frames of brood. Okay, so we got open nectar on the food frame. That's another important thing. I'm going to show you all that before I'm done with this video is the order of the brood nest. Okay, so when these bees drop eight or nine frames of brood, as soon as that hatches, they're going to backfill that with the fall flow. If you don't have a fall flow, or it's not strong enough, that's when you feed heavy syrup. And I feed way heavier than two to one. I mean, I want to be able to... Uh, Put it in there and it's almost ready to cap. You know what I'm saying? Help them as much as possible. And you need to get your bees fed up by the end of September. At least for our area. You don't want to be in October feeding your bees because they're light on food stores and you got all that moisture in your hive. That's a big no-no here. So when the eight or nine frames of brood that I know they're going to drop in September hatches, I will absolutely lay the food to them. You can see they got some food left in this hive. They got open nectar on the other side. But I want that eight or nine frames of brood to hatch and backfill every single frame. Now, I used to worry because I'd have hives that would have almost 200 pounds of honey in them, and they would literally backfill every frame that didn't have, that wasn't full of pollen with honey. And no place to cluster. And I used to read about it. And uh, you know all the. There's a lot of information saying. That you got to have open cells to cluster. I'm not saying that's wrong. But I don't read too much into that. 
I used to go back and put a frame of drawn comb so they had somewhere to cluster. Now, it's my belief not to worry about it. The bees will eat it, move it, whatever, give themselves a place to cluster. I mean, they're going to do that before it gets too serious in the winter. So I, I don't really worry too much about that. Okay, so the bees drop their eight or nine frames of brood. I lay the heavy syrup to them until they backfill every frame they can backfill. And I do it in time they can get it capped. Okay, then... I arrange my brood nest in every single box. Honey, honey, pollen. Same way on the other side. Honey, honey, pollen. All the broods hatch, so it'll be honey, 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 everywhere else. Okay, so once I get my bees to that point, I'm a fan. Okay, people say the cold don't kill bees, moisture does. And I would have to agree with that to a point. But if you don't have a big enough cluster, the cold will definitely kill your bees. Okay, and then what I do is I use candy boards. So this is what I do. I use number eight hardware cloth. I take sugar in a bowl. I put enough water into it. It turns into like a snow consistency. I pack it in. So it's like, you know, I don't know, that thick or whatever. And I let it dry out so I'm not adding all that moisture. You know, for a couple days I'll let it dry out. Then I put it on the hive. They'll clean up what little moisture is left. I don't mix pollen in with my, with my sugar because I think that just uh, is a good way to get dysentery. I haven't seen much benefit from it. So about January, I'll lay actual supplement on top of the sugar and add to it if I need to. It'll go on like this, has a hole. The moisture will come up, it'll hit the sugar. Instead of dripping back on the bees and killing them, it'll absorb into the sugar. They can go up, get a drink, they can eat. It's heated above them so they can break cluster to get to it. However, they do have to break cluster to get to it. So this is basically an emergency feed. For me, it's a ventilation plan. And I mean, what you would want in a beehive is your moisture to come up and run down the walls so they could drink it, not drip back down on them. The bees can tolerate the cold, but if they got cold water dripping on them, get sucking wet, it'll kill them the first cold snap. Another thing you can do, and I do, especially when I ain't got time to build all these, is I'll take a box and I'll shoot the corners and I'll leave the rest of it open and glue it. And I'll come back and I'll rip rips on a table saw and I'll just make shims. Instead of using a candy board, I'll make a shim with a little opening. It's a little 3 8 opening. You can do it on front and back. It can also become a top entrance. If you're in a spot that the grass grows up or something, you're worried about it, this can be your entrance too. But this lets that little three-eighths notch or whatever lets the moisture out you got to have ventilation you really need ventilation on your bees it'd be better to have too much ventilation than not enough in my opinion after that i take two inch foam i make eeks cut it down wrap it around it'll be like this i'll leave the entrance you can see the old nails where i nailed it on last time sometimes i just duct tape the corners Sometimes I'll just take a rope and tie around it. Another thing I've done in the past, I've drilled holes in my candy board at an angle so the rain don't go in. I don't like this. I'll never do it again. I think it causes a slow spring buildup. That's why I don't like screen bottom boards. Bees don't build up as fast in the spring. But mainly, get your nest back filled by the end of September, capped honey. You got your mite counts low. You got young queens, hopefully. And my bees will brood a frame and a half, two frames of brood through the whole winter. And that's how I do it. So, y'all have a good day. Y'all at Bass Bees. If you like what you see, hit the like. If not, hit the thumbs down. But at least tell me why. See ya.